So I've signed up for a free uh, Moodle Rooms account. I'm logged in and if I go to my courses you can see that I've got a number of uh, courses for which I'm enrolled and also a hidden course. These I'm enrolled as a student and in this hidden course I have a course that I'm designing. If I look to what I get to see before I even access the course you can see a progress for each of the things for which you're enrolled. You see a little avatar of the teacher of that course and in this right hand column you get a quick activity summary so that for instance I've submitted an assignment but it's as yet ungraded uh, for and posts in any of the courses for which um, I'm enrolled. The other thing you get to do and I, I like this quite a lot is that you can as a user star or favorite your courses so for instance if I favorite this one you'll notice that, that promotes that to the top of the list so if you have a large number of courses, you can redesign the layout of those just by favoriting and unfavoriting them. So what I'll do first is I'll take you into a course for which I'm a student and then later into one where I'm a teacher. So here we go. This is using the uh, Snap theme. It's kind of the default Moodle Rooms theme. It's very, very clean and modern, uh, but it's quite different than we're used to seeing Moodle look. So the first thing to note is this is a navigational interface that navigates us through the sections of content within this course. Under each section, you get an individual progress, which is quite a nice feature. So I'm through three of seven items in this list. I haven't started this uh, section at all. So that's quite handy and indeed, and I won't be able to show you in this part of the tutorial, but if you complete them all, it gives you a nice green tick. So it's a nice visual indicator to students as they go. As we scroll the screen down, you'll notice that it's all effectively one column. The content is all in one column and there are no blocks. That's a really important observation. I'm gonna come back to that in a sec. When you get to specific Moodle tools, the design interface now is much cleaner, I guess. They've got slightly different iconography, uh, but I think that the aesthetic is rather nice. And if you get down to the bottom, you get a next section, which will navigate you through to the next section of content, of course. And then down in this footer area, it's kind of a little bit of a, um, an update progress statement about what might have happened recently, etc. So the information design, I think, is quite clean and nice. But there's some interesting omissions. There aren't any blocks, or there's not obviously any blocks. In fact, what they have instead is this course dashboard feature. And if I click onto that, you get initially a couple of kind of interface widgets, which give you progress bars and grades if you've got any grades. So a bit of a summary center for want of a better word. And then any activity that's happening. And this is where you would find any blocks if there were any included. So here is the calendar block. So some of the things which we're used to seeing in a two or three column layout effectively has become hidden away from you under this course dashboard area. So that's a, a functional shift that, that we're not used to seeing in Moodle. Okay, now let me leave this course and go into one for which I'm an um, editing teacher. So I'm going to go now to my sandpit. I'm in as editing teacher and the most obvious uh, difference is there's no turn editing on or off. They've completely done away with the concept of kind of switching editing on or off. If you're an editor, editing is always on. So that's a, that's a considerable paradigm shift. So as I scroll down now, if I want to change any content, if I, for instance, want to change this content here, I hit edit section and I'm away but I've not turned editing on, and in fact, there's no way to turn editing on. It just is on all the time. So I'll give this a different title. In the default editor here, you've got a much simpler palette of things that you can do. Very, very minimal in terms of capability here. So this is using the Atto editor, um, and so I can put in headings, etc. but you'll notice that our options are very much limited. We get large, medium, or small, which maps, by the way, to headings three, four, and five. So this becomes a heading three. There's no ability uh, to change font colors and those sorts of things. So they've deliberately 
um, left it so that there's a consistency, I guess, in content at the cost of there's not quite as much uh, capability for people to do it their own way anymore. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to save that now. And there I am. It's got the new title here. You'll also notice that that's updated the navigation here because, of course, that's a section and this is navigation to our sections. I can create a new section here. And let's put some dummy text in. And so we've now got our new section and the ability then to start adding activities to that section. So standard choices here. There's a few new ones which I'm just starting to play with, such as a Moodle Rooms forum, which looks really quite nice. So if I save that now, the other thing which I've noticed is quite different is the editor controls once you've got content in here. So you'll notice that I've got an edit button, that makes sense. This more gives other options like to delete, duplicate, etc. Personalized learning designer, I won't cover that in this tutorial, but I'll do an, a separate one for that. And this is a different way of moving material around. So when you want to move this maybe to another location, perhaps even in another section, you click on the move button and then you have to decide where you're going to move it to. So maybe I might want to move that to this section of content. And then I ask, it asks me where I want to move it to. So maybe I want to move it here. And so it's placed it then between those two items. So there's some interface differences, which will take as a bit of a learning curve for our designers around that. There's some, a lot to like, however. Um, and what I'll do really quickly is I'm just going to show you this same uh, resource under different screen sizes. I have a little plugin that's really useful for this. So if you imagine this first little window here is what it might look like on a small fo format mobile device. So the page linearizes really nicely. It's very clean. If I scroll through, you'll see all the windows scrolling. Um, the navigation, this navigation that's on the top of the page when you've got a wide format um, view is collapsed to this little expanding menu here. And curiously, it's at the bottom right of the screen interface. I believe that they've done that deliberately for people on mobile devices because it's very close to your thumb. Um, and so for, for right-handed phone users, it's really quick to get to that navigation. So that just makes sense to me. So let's have a look at some other changes that would affect the designer or the editing teacher. The first thing, and I'm sure this is configurable at the system level, but people can get to change the cover image. This does two things. It changes the banner image here. It also changes the image that's displayed on the My Courses that you saw previously. So this is a way that people can kind of customize the look of their particular Moodle delivery. So if I, I do that and hit save, and now if I return to my courses, you'll notice it's updated the, the image there as well. So that's quite rather nice. The really obvious difference uh, is the absence of uh, blocks. And this is the function of the course dashboard for the designer as well. So um, you have a range of features that are baked in to uh, Moodle Rooms at the top. And then an edit blocks button. And I've added, for instance, the progress bar. But it has, I confess it, demoted the purpose of these blocks. They're very hard now to find. And it would take some effort for students to scroll down to locate those blocks. Perhaps something like the progress bar becomes less important because it's almost built in to this progress here. In fact, this is an example where, because I've completed all the items, I have a completion tick. So that's maybe not a good example, but things like ReadSpeaker and other blocks we might rely on are going to become much less obvious in the Snap theme. So that's a quick tour. I'm going to continue to explore other features and I'll do other recordings to look at things like the learning designer.